Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Now, two birds with one stone in this video, cause a lot of people have asked what the deal is with the shooting jackets that we wear at the competitions, which people have seen in early videos, and also how best to shoot sling supported with a K31, because the sling's on the side, and that puts a lot of people off. So, first of all, the shooting jackets. Now, I've had a shooting jacket since I was about 13 years old, had various types. We used to shoot just prone with them, really, the odd bit of uh, kneeling or standing once or twice a year. Uh, and we used to believe that when prone, it had to be really tight to constrict your body. Now, it turns out that that's not the case. Uh, somebody pointed that out on the Army Rumour Service, uh, but just simply by posting a photo of someone shooting prone small ball rifle in the Olympics and said, um, his jacket's not done up. He'll have it done up when he's standing, but prone, actually all the jacket does is hold your elbow pads, your shoulder pad, and your sling. And here, you see I have a hook that is as high up my arm as I can get it, and still hook onto the sling. Now these jackets, they're standard sort of ISSF rifle jackets made to the, their rules. This one I bought in Holland. I had a tailor-made one for my 18th birthday, British style one with a zip. Not allowed here, because under the uh, We Run ISSF rules on equipment. Um, and basically, that's really very much the extent of it. It's a shooting aid. It very, very much helps, particularly this. And it's highly convenient not having to carry around multiple elbow pads or suffer. And uh, the recoil pad is very, very useful. K31s aren't light recoil. They're not as bad as a Car 98K, but they're not exactly light. This one has the luxury of a couple of straps so you can adjust the position of it. And it's got a pocket, and in the pocket I put my air defenders, which I obviously don't need now, my shooting glove, which I do, a pen knife, just in case I need to tighten screws, and a little film canister uh, with a couple of little bits and bobs in it, a couple of earplugs if I'm on a particularly noisy range or next to a particularly noisy rifle, and a blob of blue tack that I put under my glasses there so that when I'm prone, I'm looking through the center of the lens. I've got pretty bad astigmatism, so my glasses need to be positioned just right. And yeah, I know I should go and spend the money and get some proper shooting glasses made up like I used to. So I'm gonna leave this on even though it makes me look like a tit and uh, get down with the rifle on the floor here to show you how best to use it. So first of all, let's look up the setup. Now, we in Switzerland are obliged to attach the, uh, the sling to the rifle in the approved manner. In France, they like to put uh, 1911 or uh, 1889 bottom-mounted sling swivels on, and then they put an American uh, Springfield sling, which is a better setup, particularly as you can use it basically like a single point, uh, whereas we have to attach the official sling in an approved manner to the official points. The, uh, there's concessions for left-handers, you can swap that round, which you can just turn it around, and you can modify the buttstock so that you've got one of these on the other side. Now, the slings are supposed to be used with a clip there, however, you're not obliged to use it in competition, and anyone who's remotely serious gets rid of that because it just gets in the way and really hinders you. So. Just attach the sling like that through from the back. That's where your adjustment is to make it fit you. And then round the front in the correct approved manner so that it can be shortened like that. Right, it's difficult to get a good camera angle on this, but what we're basically gonna do is set up the sling so that it goes from the buttstock, round the back of my arm, through that hook, and round the back of my wrist. And if I do that, you will see why this works. So, magazine out so I can close the bolt. Now, basically, what this allows me to do, just like a single point sling from Match or a Springfield type sling round your arm, this allows me to practically eliminate um, using muscles to hold the rifle up. Unfortunately, I still have to use a little bit of muscle force, unlike a proper 
um, single point sling with a handstop where I can just rest into it. This will just drop. But it basically goes on like that. What is important to know is you need to index somewhere with your hand. You need to ensure that, you, that your left hand is always in the same place. And what I do is I put my ring finger against uh, the edge of the wood there and on the rear sight base. And this provides a good index. Sometimes you're shooting a bit uphill, so you put more fingers on, but it's important to always have your hand in the same place. And because these are not free floaters, just don't, just no, 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 I know what you're thinking. Please don't free float them, please. Unless the stock's really warped, you, you just, you're gonna be in for a bad time. If you free float them, they're designed with muzzle, to have muzzle pressure, they shoot best with muzzle pressure. This one in competition today, my last six shots in a series without marking, was under two mower, sling supported, right? These, nothing has been done to this rifle except um, having a set of target sights put on it. So, uh, yeah, effectively, I find this more comfortable than, than, uh, than a two-point sling mounted on the bottom because there's no tendency to twist the rifle like that that then has to be counteracted by you twisting it the other way. This just sits very, very nicely, and you can line your sights up and release the shot. Now, because, sorry, back at the point of uh, they're not free floaters, you, you, if you have variations in sling tension, so you, one, one shot you've got the sling really tight like that, the next shot it's gone through too far and it's super loose, that's gonna show itself on target a little bit. In fact, in extreme cases, it might show it on target quite a lot, but um, it's, it's also it's something you get used to is making sure that you're feeling the same sling tension underneath your wrist each time. And, and, and if, as you're shooting, you, you feel it getting tighter or looser, the easiest way is to take the rifle out your shoulder like that, run it to where you know it needs to be. And this is just a question of practice. I, you need, this is a question of feel and practice. You can, uh, you can get the sling tension right again. Sorry for the little digression on uh, not free floating them, but unless you're gonna go full pillar, pillar bedding and really, really knowing what you're doing, you're in for a bad time. Every so often, uh, someone turns up on the Swiss Rifles forum saying, oh, I just bought a K31 and I removed all the wood uh, at the muzzle bearing and now it doesn't shoot straight. Well, yeah, now it won't shoot straight because you've removed the bit that makes it shoot straight. So, good job. So there you go. And in fact, this setup is uh, sufficient that if you need to rest between shots, you can put the rifle down like that, pick it back up again, pick the butt up. And what I do is as I pick the butt up, I pull the sling through to where I'm feeling the right tension, put the butt in my shoulder, settle down into the aim, bang. And as you can see, even though I have no neck, I have to move my head to cycle it. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Please consider supporting us on Patreon and so on. And uh, see you again on the range sometime. Bye.